round to the yellow. Um, same thing, you need the screwdriver, loosen up the terminals, feed the wire through there or into it. What needs to be done is that you put the ground, doesn't matter, they all have to be done. Feed it in there, tighten. Make sure it's in there, it's secured. Same thing again, clear to the white. Put it in. Secure it. Tight. Black wire to black wire. Put it in the terminal. Feed it in there. Tighten it. So start what we need to do is that Wait once So what we're gonna do now is we have to fasten uh, the grounds that came in and to do that we're gonna need a anything that we we can use is uh, I use a ratchet driver or a screwdriver and it's uh, five sixteenths and we need to have a washer, lock washer, and then the nut itself. I'm just going to put that over the post and secure that in. Just putting it over that. And then eventually secures that in. So and then once that's done, now we can, then you can also do the uh, pendant uh, connection on there at this time. Put the pendant connection on there. Pull that off so you can see what that pendant looks like. And this is the pendant uh, connector. So okay. it just has to go in where the pendant connector label is. Okay. The input there. So we just put it in there. Just secure it, and then, then you can put the pendant phone cable into the pendant connection and securely lock it. So from that point, then when that's done, then we can just put the cover back on. And and there's six screws you have to put back in. It's need to be put back in. Same Allen wrench. And what size was the Allen wrench? Three thirty seconds. Okay. Allen wrench. And again, just uh, put them in. It doesn't have to be tightened so that they're securely in there. Okay. There's three different uh, methods of running uh, the uh, the cables. All cables are going to come from the power supply in the control room. One method is the cables come from the control room to the X arm and then one set of cables goes to Z2, one set of cables goes to three, Z3, three, Z1. Um, that will leave you with three sets of cables to be connected to the X arm. You have one set power, ground, data, going to the computer room, another set of power, ground, and data going from that arm, Z1, up here to the X arm, and another set of cables, power, ground, and data going from the X arm to Z2. Another method of doing it is in what we call a daisy chain method. You would go from the power supply in the computer room to Z1, from Z1 to X, and from X to Z2. The other method is computer room to Z2, Z2 to X, X to Z1. One of those three methods need to be used. 
Okay, what we're going to do now is Gary and I are going to mount the uh, X laser to the uh, to the ceiling plate. Um, it's easiest with two people. It's a pretty heavy laser. It can be done with one person. Uh, we'll give you a little idea of how that's done uh, after we do it. Make sure that the non-movable one is to the right side of the CT. Movable is here. That's the non-movable laser is pointing. The non-movable laser is on the right. Now this can be done with one person and an easy way to do it with one person is by uh, having a loop of wire around here. The one person can then slide it through the loop, use that as the other person, bolt up one side and then go around to the other side. But since there's two of us, this is the easier way to do it. We'll measure uh, from the edge of the plate to this edge of the laser to make sure that we're, we're square on the plate. Six centimeters. Perfect. Tighten yours, and then I'll take your, your wrench. We're six centimeters here. It can vary depending on where, you, where, where your location for center is. Um, and then we'll tighten down the, uh, the bolts. Stop. Alrighty, we snug the bolts down real tight once we know that the measurement here is equal all the way across. Then we're going to have to fit all of these cables through this hole in the uh, lasers and we're going to connect them again to these green connectors just as we did on the side laser. We run into one difficulty here because we only have one of the green connectors. We need two because we're going to have three sets of data cables and one of these only takes two. So you need another one and that's why you have this, this con connector point right here. For each the power and the, uh, and the data. Okay, you're going to need two. Stop. Now, all of these again come together uh, because of the uh, configuration of this conduit that goes from the computer room to the ceiling and then out to the, to the Z1 and Z2 arm. If you do do the, uh, the daisy chain method where you go from the computer room to Z1, Z1 to X, X to Z2, um, you'll only need one of these connectors in each one of the arms. If you do do this configuration like we have here, the computer room to X and out to the arms, uh, these are a tight fit going through here. It can be done uh, if you just do, you know, a few at a time and get them through. Take a couple at a time, and, and uh, it usually goes okay. All right, now we have all of them through the hole up here. Uh, we need to connect them to these connectors. Again, this is going to be just like we did on the Z1 arm on the data. It's the large one here. Um, we're going to take, we have three data cables here now. And this is going to be just like on the side, black on the outside, the white or clear, and then the bare one. Same with this side, black on the outside, clear or white and the bare one. That's only going to take two of these. Now we're going to need the other connector for this one. And so we'll take this connector out and do this the same there. We'll also do the power cables the same way. These two connectors here. Remember power is red on the outside, then black. And one of these power connectors will take two of them. Red on the outside, black, and then red on this side and black. And then the other power cable, which will be the third one, will go to this connector the same way. We need to take the power supply and kind of dress it correctly 
by cleaning it up, putting the cover back on, and then putting the wires back in there, and then we're going to take the power cord and plug it into the outlet. Once that's done, then we need to take the computer and turn that on, plugging these into an outlet. And then what you want to do is kind of dress everything up. These are uh, serial cables would go through a uh, knockout hole in the counter, but it's not there now. It eventually will feed up into there and into back into the computer. Uh, from what that's what we've done there now, we've turned everything on or turned the plug the cords in. Now we just need to turn the power on. And that is the on button. And then also on the monitor. Make sure that's on. Um, while we're doing all the powers, we might as well switch the, the uh, power supply on. Turn the power supply on. What you want to see is a red glow in there. LEDs inside there. On. And you know the power supply is on. If it's flashing or uh, chirping of any sort, then you know that you have the serial cables in the wrong spots. Once the power supply is uh, hooked up and turned on, uh, take a walk out into the CT room, take a look at every arm and make sure that a red LED is lit on every one of the arms that will tell you that your power is hooked up correctly. And you're going to come into a login screen and the username is always going to be administrator and the password is going to be GAMMEX, case sensitive. G-A-M-M-E-X. G-A-M-M-E-X. And then enter it. First boot up, we need to go to calibration screen. Do that. To do that, we need to get rid of all this stuff. And we're just, we're just going to uninstall this Google uh, icon. Get rid of the Google stuff. What we need to do is then go to the calibration, start tab, all programs, CT Sim, Cal 5.2, and click that, and it's going to launch the program. And then the lasers will do a self test. Lower limits, upper limits, checking lights, making sure there's no obstructions. And that's it. So. Okay, when we launch the program uh, on the computer, whether it be in uh, a CT SIM 5.2 calibration mode or user mode, the lasers are going to go through a self test. They're going to go to the bottom, check a limit switch, go to the top, check a limit switch, do a few tests of moving around, and then they'll settle, settle out uh, to a spot and turn off. Gary's going to uh, turn the computer on now, launch the program. And as you can see, the lasers are going to do their self-test. Uh, prior to doing any adjustments, you need to take the tie wraps uh, that are securing the uh, laser lights for uh, shipping. Just uh, cut them off. Make sure you remove the stuff. Yes. Okay, when first setting up um, to find ISO center of the machine, we have to place the, the uh, Phantom on the table. 